Good morning. My name is Henry. I'm the senior pastor here at Bidwell Press, and I just want to say it's a great joy and privilege to have everyone here this morning to worship our God together on this Serve Chico Sunday. I'm glad that you are participating in this morning with us. If you are an online participant, we're glad that you are engaging Bidwell Press and its worship together in this way. We'd love to see you sometime soon in person. And welcome one and welcome all. One of my uh, favorite Led Zeppelin lyrics goes like this, upon all of us a little rain must fall. Um, and a little rain fell this morning on Sir Chico Sunday. Uh, so some of you have had your projects rescheduled. Others of you are going to be participating in your projects, um, most all of which will be indoors. But just uh, a word of encouragement, there are a number of ways we can serve our God this morning. Amen. Uh, there are. So whether you are participating in an indoor project or you are uh, in your own neighborhood or perhaps uh, some of you are going to be uh, enjoying Sunday brunch um, after this service, well, you can be generous in how you tip your server. That is a way you can serve your neighbor. Uh, you can serve your neighbor by calling one you haven't reached out to in a long time or just random acts of kindness around your own household. So there's a number of ways we can serve Chico and serve our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, and uh, on that note, we're going we're gonna to offer some praise to our God. But first, why don't we stand and serve Chico and serve our neighbor by saying hi to those around us. everybody. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord together? It's rainy, but we still have each other. You know, I was at a women's retreat yesterday. Let's remain standing um, just for the day. And we sang a song and it was Colossians 2-2. And it says, my goal is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And we got to hear a series of testimonies. And, you know, the, the theme in those testimonies was those people were never alone when they came to know the goodness of God. They were in community. So let's celebrate that. Let's listen to the voices as we worship this morning. It feels kind of like camp this morning. That's what I told them is... It's an intimate crowd this morning, so let's just raise our voices to our good God this morning. i 
of our hearts, we can bring anything to you this morning. You all sound beautiful this morning. It's fun when it's a little bit more intimate and less instruments when we hear each other.
do reign, Father. You reign over our lives and over creation. Lord, you are over it all and in it all. And we love you and we trust you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, church. It's good to lift up the name of Jesus with you this morning. Uh, good to be here, and I love, I was just looking at Greg real quick during that last verse and said, what a beautiful line that God's kingdom flows in reverse. The, the small become great, the last become first. That's something to internalize uh, this morning. That's something for me to internalize in my life. And I love that we can sing it. I want you also to live it, especially on a rain day. Uh, there may be things that you expected to happen today that aren't happening as a result of the rain. And I want you to look at this to echo what Henry said earlier as an opportunity to do something small, a small act of love, a way in which God has given us a morning in which to just exercise, service, however we may say fit. Some of you are still in projects, but others, this just may be an opportunity. What can you do with this time in light of the truth that the kingdom is here. So, I, uh, I appreciate that line and invite you into it this morning also. I also want to highlight a couple of things going on. Uh, just to two this morning, especially for young people that are happening in the life of our church. Two gatherings, one specifically. Let me ask you this question to cue it up. What could be better than a junior high and senior high lock-in? Huh? Personally? I can think of several things that might be better. That's just me shopping for a new skincare product. For me, that might be better. I'm staring at the ceiling. But if you're a junior and senior hire, nothing could be better. And so that's what we invite you into April 26th. There is a game night. It's a lock-in until 11 p.m. Beautiful time. Check that out. Talk to Mary. Talk to your people. There it is. Also, if you are a college or young adult person, so 18 to circa 29, we like to say. Sometimes that's a helpful definition age-wise. We do a meal sometimes twice a month, sometimes once a month. Tonight, the Cripes are hosting the meal at their farmhouse in North Chico. We'd love to invite you out. We'd love for you to join us. Even if you haven't signed up yet, you can still do so or talk to me. There'll be food and, of course, a place for you at the table. And we know, we know that some of you who are young, your idea of dinner is highly sodium fortified noodles or sugar laced puffs. So this is going to be an upgrade, right? This will be an upgrade and we want, to, we want you to dine, even feast with us tonight. Awesome. Uh, today we are, we're, we're giving. It's uh, the thematically, we are in the spirit of service. I hope that plays out for you in some beautiful ways today, but we know also that serving is just who we are. It's part of generosity which flows from us because we've received God's generosity, generosity, God's grace. So part of what we do in worship is we give, and we give to God's work in the church. And so we invite you into that space today to give. I see the serve Chico back there too, and I that reminds me to say that also, um, in lieu of some of the projects, we're going to have a gathering downstairs right after this. There's hot chocolate and donuts and coffee. So if you want to just gather down there and talk about how you want to live that out today, please do so. I digress. <laughs> I'm in the middle of helping you understand why we give. It's part of worship. We give because God has given us so much so there are a myriad of ways to do that. Um, you, of course, one of the easiest ways is the Church Center app. If you're not on the Church Center app, you can download it and get that process going. But it's also our webpage, and we have some ushers this morning who will offer the plate. And there, there they are. They're getting that ready. Thank you, friends. And so if you have your gift with you today, you can give that way. So uh, as I like to say and remind us, uh, people of God— these are the gifts of God, and so we say together, thanks be to God. Julia is going to lead us in this song. Um, feel free to stand once the basket passes.
Yes, thank you to the praise team for leading us. Now we have the opportunity to hear from Scripture, and uh, it's really a message to help send us out into this world. Whether we serve today with Serve Chico, or we serve during this week, or we serve in whatever way God gives us opportunity to serve. The message is called, Our Work is not in vain. Our work is not in vain. It comes from the first letter of the Corinthians chapter 15, the letter that Paul wrote at the very end of that letter. So let's ask that God would bless this message and would empower us to serve in whatever way God has for us today and this week. Would you, would you pray with me? Our God, we thank you that you are present that by your resurrection, God, 
the resurrection of Christ, you have given us your spirit so that what we do in this present world matters and connects deeply with what you will fulfill in the new heaven and the new earth. You've told us, Jesus, that you came not to be served, but to serve, and we follow in our lives in that service and in the power of your resurrection. So help me to proclaim your truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth that we may be transformed, that the truth will make us free to serve in Christ's name. Amen. So once again, the title of the message is our, our labor is not, our work is not in vain. And uh, it comes again from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Uh, this is a briefer message than usual. It's kind of a sermonette, you might say. And uh, some preachers don't like giving sermonettes. They say sermonettes make Christianettes. But uh, let's hope that's not the case, right? Because what we're going to do is live out the sermon. Whether, again, we do it today at Serve Chico on Sunday or we go out and serve. And here's the question that I've been working with these past couple weeks. I had a class where we particularly looked at this question. How do you bring together two things? One... The proclamation that Christ is risen. Amen. And that's what we do for all these weeks following Easter, what we call Eastertide. And then the second thing is that today we focus on serving. How do we connect those two? Easter and the power of the resurrection and service. How do they come together? I think they come together very powerfully. So in this class, uh, over the last couple of weeks, we've been looking at, on Wednesday nights, what the New Testament says about living in light of Jesus' resurrection. And we had at least three l- things that we took away from this, three insights. The first is that the role of the church is in witnessing, witnessing to the hope of the resurrection in a world of despair. And that comes right out of the last chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28. Going, therefore, make disciples. Lead people, guide people into this world, this movement of Jesus, the living and reigning Lord. We give hope, the hope of the resurrection. That's the first thing. The second is that we wait not for an ethereal heaven, if we think of heaven in this ethereal way, but for a renewed creation, a new heaven and a new earth. That comes from Revelation chapter 21. We as believers, in fact, have the first fruits of this new creation as the resurrection has taken root in our lives, as we confess Christ as Lord. And so, according to Romans 8, especially verses 18 through 25, we wait with eager expectation for the full revealing of us as the children of God. And not only we wait for that, But here's the secret. All of creation waits for this new creation to burst forward. It's what biblical scholars, like Ray and Henry, (laughs) kind of like that. I don't know why. They are biblical scholars, but I thought that was a good moment. Anyway, what biblical scholars, like Ray and Henry, tell us is the now and the not yet. Isn't that what we talk about, right? It's like we have the now, this down payment yeah, that, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. Ray's going, that was me who said that, actually. Um, the now, and that's going to be in fullness in the, in the age to come, the time to come. Now, I heard a little parable of how this looks, this first fruits, this first taste. It was from a preacher I really like named Charlie Dates, and he was saying that first taste is like, remember when your parent, your mother, your father was baking a cake? And you were young, right? And you didn't want to wait for that cake to be fully baked. So what did you do? You took that spoon, you went into the batter, right? And you tasted it. And it tasted good. Len has a few of those experiences, apparently. (laughs) But you know, it's not the full cake, right? The full cake is with the icing and the decorations and that wonderful connection between icing 
and cake itself that makes a cake a real cake. It's, a, it's just an image, of course, of we have that first taste, that first spoonful, but God is going to bring this in fullness, and all the work we do is going to be fulfilled. That was the second thing we learned. The third thing is where I'm going to camp out today, <clears throat> that because of the resurrection, our labor is not in vain. So I want to pull up on the screen 1 Corinthians 15, verses 50 through 58, and uh, if you know this letter, what was happening was this was one of the early Christian communities, and it was primarily Gentile, meaning non-Jewish, so it's a long letter because Paul has to teach the Gentiles the great traditions that we learn as Christians from the Jewish community, and one of those is the promise of resurrection and a new heaven and a new earth. Verse 50, what I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this, flesh and blood, the naturally born creation that we are, cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Look, I tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will all be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For this perishable natural body must put on the spirit-infused body, imperishability, and this mortal body must put on immortality. And when this perishable body puts on the imperishability, and this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. On the screen, you'll see the New Revised Standard. I want to read a paraphrase from the message. Death swallowed by triumphant life. Who got the last word, O oh death? O oh death, who's afraid of you now? It was sin that made death so frightening and law code guilt that made sin its leverage, its destructive power. But now in a single victorious stroke of life, all three, sin, guilt, death, are gone. The gift of our Master, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. And now I go back to verse 58 in the New Revised Standard, which is on the screen. Anytime you see a therefore, this is really important. And this is the most important verse for today. Paul doesn't say, wow, let's have a party because we're all going to go and have eternal life. Wow, that is a party worth having. But instead he says, like we're saying today on Sir Chico, in light of the resurrection, therefore, get to work. And your work is totally transformed. Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be steadfast and movable always excelling in the work of the Lord because you know that in the Lord your labor, you can say it with me, is not in vain. And you know what Paul's referring to? Genesis 3, where the labor in the Garden of Eden was cursed. There were thorns. There was the sweat of the brow. And if you read the book of Ecclesiastes, you see that all of our life has a certain vanity or emptiness to it. And the promise of resurrection, yes, which we can celebrate, is that there's a God who will give us everlasting life. I hope Easter still resonates, the Easter Sunday still resonates in our head. But it also, the message of the risen Christ is that vanity of work, that curse of work is gone. I'm going to let three New Testament scholars help us out here. The first comes from uh, N.T. Wright, whom you hear from often. It's from his commentary on 1 Corinthians. I'm going to start with part of it. It is true that God is going to transform this present world and renew our whole selves, bodies included. If that's true, then what we do in this present time with our bodies and with our world matters. And for too long, he says, Christians have separated our life on earth from what's to come. It is a matter of greatest encouragement to Christian workers 
as we seek to serve, I added that, Christian workers, most of whom are away from the public eye, unsung heroes and heroines getting on faithfully and quietly with their God-given tasks, that what they do in the Lord during this present time will last, will matter, will stand for all time. And now I believe we have the rest of the quote up uh, on a slide. How God will take our prayer, our art, our love, our writing, our political action, our serving for Serve Chico. I can't believe Wright put that actually in his text. That's amazing. Our music, our honesty, our daily work, our pastoral care, our teaching, our whole selves. How God will take this and weave it. I love this. Now he's getting into a little bit of like uh, poetry. How God will weave its varied strands into the glorious tapestry of the new creation. We can at present have no idea. That God will do so as part of the truth of the resurrection. Yeah. Part of the truth of the resurrection. And perhaps one of the most comforting parts of all. So I'm reminded of a story I've told before about Linda Wilson Allen, who is a bus driver a Muni bus driver in San Francisco, and she says, my bus is a sanctuary. When you step up into the bus, you're stepping into holy space. You see, this transforms not just this, what we do here, as powerful as it is, but serving the people around us and serving in our everyday life. And so, Linda Wilson Allen is so favored by the people who are served by her, that they'll let other buses pass by so that they can wait for her bus. Because at one point there was a woman who was in her 80s who had extra bags and couldn't quite make it on the bus. And so Linda Wilson Allen stepped down and got her bags and brought them up as an act of service because of her faith. You see, this message of resurrection transforms everything we do. I don't know if you do this kind of thing, but whenever I'm at Chico State, I pray, God, fill this classroom, fill this office with the presence of the kingdom and the risen Christ in what I am doing today. So whatever we do, whether we're able to serve today, we do it in light of the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You know what's so powerful about this, and I'm now going to draw my other two New Testament scholars who together wrote on this passage, Eugene Boring and Fred Craddock, they tell us that, you know, at the end of the day, we don't really get a picture exactly of what this new life is going to be. But here's what they say. Readers of this passage are asked not to believe a concept of what happens when we die. Not some concept. Some nailed down theology. As much as I love systematic theology, it's not that. But Paul ends here to trust God in grateful praise. The God who raised Jesus from the dead. So may the risen Christ accompany us today as we serve. Or this week if we do our Serve Chico projects this week or later. Or however we go out from this room This spirit of service, this guideline of service, let it be with the risen Christ. And let us recognize that our labor, because of Christ's presence, is never in vain. Amen. I'm going to close in prayer, in a prayer that will be a kind of pastoral prayer for you all as you serve. And then um, I had a last minute addition that Rachel and the team are willing to do. We're going to actually... Uh, do a song from Porter's Gate about our labor is not in vain. So uh, join me in prayer, and then the team will will guide us in this uh, closing song. Join your hearts with me. Our God, we thank you for the power of the message of 1 Corinthians 15, that it is a good truth that you accompany us as the risen Christ. And so I pray today, however we serve, 
However we show and demonstrate your risen and reigning power of the resurrection in us, that our service would be in light of that resurrecting power, resurrection power, and that we would be convinced and comforted by your presence and know that our labor is not in vain. Amen? Amen. This is a new song, but why don't you stand as we sing and receive this message. Okay. Whether you want to sing or just take this and internalize it and meditate on the words. for this blessing, let me just say two things. First of all, we have, once again, coffee and donuts downstairs in Fellowship Hall, so please uh, take the opportunity to hang out and enjoy those. And I see Debbie and Jill, who are here, about right here. If, you know, a lot, there's a lot of changes that occurred because of the rain, so I think they can answer questions. Is that fair? If you, 
and you'll be down in Fellowship Hall. So find one of the two of them. With that said, go with this blessing. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the power, the presence of the risen and reigning Christ be with you today and forevermore. Amen.